Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks as always to our producer, Jeff DeRall. We're actually in the studios of uh, Eagle Community Television today. Joining us is Joanne Jordan from Music Sparks. Joanne Jordan is a board certified music therapist and we wanted to find out a little bit more about her work in music therapy and her company, Music Sparks. Okay, let's begin at the beginning then, Joanne. What is music therapy? Music therapy is using music to help meet non-musical goals. So, for example, working with older adults that have dementia, sometimes it's helping them get reactivated um, through singing and playing instruments so that they're able to reconnect with some of their old past memories or maybe be more um, positive in their socialization with their peers and with the staff. And how do you accomplish this? Through responding to where that person is in that moment and helping to um, connect with their past musical experiences and possibly present new ones. So it's through active participation. It's not through being entertained. It's by being a part of the music making, whether it's singing or playing instruments. So then, Joanne, by singing or playing a musical instrument, they reconnect with something that they've had in their past? Is that the idea here? That is pretty much the idea, especially with dementia clientele. And also, it, it can help um, calm them because it can be very difficult for people with dementia to share what's going on with them mm -hmm. as far as their emotions or where they are. So mm -hmm. sometimes just being connected with and mm -hmm around the music makes them feel more a part of something else. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because music has such power. It has power to calm, has power to excite, like uh, uh, the pep bands, for example, and things like that. Uh, but there's such a range of emotions involved, aren't there? Yes, very large emotions. Okay, now you work with the very young as well, right? Talk about the prenatal work you do. Well, I don't do prenatal. I do um, preschoolers, and part of my rationale for doing that is my big love is doing intergenerational groups of preschoolers with older adults. So by mm -hmm. doing um, preschool programs where parents get to know me through the library and through lessons, it p facilitates people signing up for the intergenerational programs. All right, so you actually connect two different uh, generations then. Or three, if you want to add the parents in there. Oh, so. okay. So parents can get involved too. Yes. Okay. So talk a little about that process then. How the the generations interact with each other. Generally, in those groups, what I'm doing is we do some sort of greeting song where we're teaching social skills for the kids. Um, everybody pretty much knows the routine as far as the elders in, at Cedar View, and then we move into a variety of independent playing and then playing with partners. So the children also become come my hands and feet so they help distribute and collect instruments. So they're learning to take turns, they're learning to clean up. The parents are always amazed that they will put away the instruments for me and they won't pick up their toys at home. So <laughs> um, We do a collection of both children's songs and then you can sing traditional older adult songs if you give kids enough cues and help like four-leaf clover, you have a four-leaf clover and you have symbols on it and the mm -hmm. kids can follow along and they learn the songs. So it's a lot more than just music appreciation then. Right, so we're, we're working on literacy skills with them too. So music has always been a part of your life, hasn't it? Yes. Talk about that. Well, my mom always accused me of singing before I talked. Um, so I just grew up in a very musical home and grew up and taking piano lessons, singing in choirs, playing in band. So when I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do with life, I knew it had to involve music. And it also involved you uh, with your activities in church, in vocal, as well as instrumental. Huh? Right. So that young kid that's banging on the pots and pans uh, as a, a toddler uh, is not so far off the mark then. No, we, we need to be able to explore and create sound. 
and we should we should not stop playing just because we're adults. <laughs> so continue that uh, that work then with music. Right. Isn't that part of what music does though? You get an appreciation at an early age, elementary, middle school, something along that line, whether it's instrumental or vocal, and you can take that with you, whether it's singing in the choir, uh, in the uh, community choir that uh, uh, Terry Crow uh, puts together, or uh, playing an instrument either in a band or with a neighborhood group then. Right. It's, it's a wonderful thing that you can continue your involvement in music generally throughout your whole life. I mean, look at the performers that retire at 85 or mm -hmm. something. So mm -hmm. music does have that gift that it can travel with us. Joanne, you've talked a little about the benefits of music therapy. Uh, expand on that a little bit, uh, how it benefits uh, people either in preschool or uh, uh, elementary or uh, with your work with older adults? Well, one of the nice things about music therapy is we're probably, mm -hmm. other than nurses, the only profession that works with people from birth to death. Mm -hmm. um, so we're able to use music to support people in their development, able to use music to help people with their their needs um, within that moment. It might be dealing with mental issues that they're having, helping them work through processes. It might be giving them skills that they can then use to interact with at home. Um, a lot of times I feel that what I'm doing with parents is showing them ways that they can use songs mm -hmm when they go home or I'll share with them at the end of the session you might take this home and try this and see if it helps you. So I try to give people some concrete things they can do. Um, today is Kansas Day so I've been spending the weeks enjoying Kansas songs with the elders around Hayes. So a chance for us to reflect about communities and where people have lived and impressions people have of Kansas so it can just be a way to wrap current events as well as past experiences. So it seems like that while it might be a solo effort, that is to say a, an individual singer, an individual musician, for example, like our producer Jeff Durall, who's a drummer, you know, it's an individual, but it's yet still a group process, a sharing process, right? Right. Music therapy can occur either as an individual or in a group setting. A lot of what I'm currently doing around Hayes is group settings, but um, ideally you're working with individuals toward set goals and helping them progress on beyond needing therapy. Well, right. Tell me a little about that group setting. As you go into a group then, uh, are these people trained in instruments? Do they have any instrumental background or music background? or? Some of them do, some of them don't. What's the mix there? Well, it's sort of whoever shows up that day, um, unfortunately. But usually in most of the facilities, we've specific, specifically targeted a, gr a group of people to participate. Uh -huh. um, but it's sort of a mix, mm -hmm. and I have to balance what's going on with the group according to what their emotions and their energies are that day and also their interest, which is always fluctuating, and it's so sort of a trial for me to get to learn <laughs> their music too. So. so you're working with different backgrounds then. Right. People who have no exposure to music, people who have some, people who have different settings as they relate to the music and right. such. A lot of different uh, balls in the air there. Aren't right. They? Talk a little about Music Sparks, your company that you formed. What's that all about? Well, it is my opportunity to provide music therapy and music enrichment services here in Hayes for the elders and for preschoolers. So people are able to contact me and uh, contract with me to provide services or to come out and speak with their groups or train their staff on using music in a more effective way. So there's a lot of components then to Music Sparks. Yes, sir. Now you say uh, in Hayes, uh, have you expanded into the area yet with outreach programs? I also go to La Crosse, to Locust Grove. Uh -huh. so. so working with uh, assisted living areas, seniors, uh, preschoolers, and school-age children, 
uh, you can connect these groups together and meet their needs then. Yes. How does it work then? Explain a little bit more from the Music Sparks perspective on how you can work with others. You work with parents, uh, you work with some of the staff, for example, things like that. Uh, how does that work? It varies a lot according to the needs of the facility. Sometimes it's just making people aware of how much noise we have in the background. Mm -hmm. We don't often consider in facilities the fact that people have TVs on Blastissimo mm -hmm. and that we need to turn off sound and have periods of silence or periods of quiet. Mm -hmm. How difficult it can be to hear uh, over background noise, whether we have hearing impairments or we have mm -hmm. uh, dementia that can add to the confusion. Sometimes it's training people to use a person's music likes to help facilitate. Maybe they're not big into walking down the hall. Well, maybe there's a song they really like to sing and they're more apt to walk with that. So maybe uh, making people aware of, of ways that they can utilize music to make life a little easier for them and the person they're working with. Music connects in so many areas of our lives, doesn't it? It really does. Jeff was talking earlier uh, uh, in our uh, interview about uh, how he still responds to music and uh, different songs that he remembers playing in, in the band and such. And I guess we all do that to an extent. Yes, we do. Talk about, if you would, and I always ask music educators this, Joanne, about the importance of the arts, particularly music, in a person's life uh, in the school age. Let's talk about school age because of the influence of music in uh, uh, elementary and such throughout perhaps much of their career. Talk about the importance of it. Based on what I've read and and the continuing research we know that music helps develop a lot of different neural pathways in the brain. Music is important in and of itself just because it is a form of communication, a way of interacting, um, a set of skills but it is also important because it supports math, it, 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 it supports language, it supports communication, socialization. It, it has a lot of other benefits in addition to just being an art form that allows us to express ourselves. Sports talks about team effort. Well, the same thing happens when you've got a group of uh, young people in a band or an orchestra that are performing. It's a team effort, isn't yes, it? Yes, very much so. And you're only as strong as your weakest player. So music sparks. And if somebody is interested in the connectivity of music therapy, benefiting uh, young people as well as seniors, Joanne Jordan is the person to talk to. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, thank you for the uh, visit about music therapy. Joanne Jordan from Music Sparks, our community connection. Thanks for watching.